In preparing for the exam or the SAC when it comes to reading and comparing, it's really useful to be able to look at successful ways of putting a comparative paragraph together and being able to steal sentence starters or sentence structures that work and make them your own as you start to write your own practice pieces. And in light of this, today I'm going to provide you with a sample paragraph that I have written. I'll be including a copy of it up there in the description to the video, but as I read through it for you today, I'm also going to point out a few things that I've done that can really help you improve your comparative paragraph writing. And so today we are looking at the idea of memories and how these exist and the things that we can compare about them throughout the longest memory and the seven stages of grieving. And so the paragraph goes as follows. Memories of the past are present in both texts. However, the characters hold different beliefs and attitudes towards what has happened to them and their people before them. Enoch and Mailman include a timeline of Indigenous history in the prologue of their play to provide not only context, but also an understanding of a shared history of Indigenous Australians and how this history has shaped them. By structuring their play as a series of events and stories, the audience is able to empathise and understand part of the experience of Aboriginal Australians. And so the things that I want you to see in the early parts of this paragraph are the way in which it's been set up with this opening sentence here, talking about the fact that whilst, yep, memories are present in both texts, that really the characters hold different beliefs and there are attitudes about what has happened to them and their community of people before them. So right from the outset, there's this idea of saying, okay, memories are something that exists between both of these texts, but they say different things and the characters experience memories and all those things in different ways. You'll then notice that all of the discussion that exists when it comes to uh, the seven stages of grieving is all very structural. It's talking about the construction of the play talking about the uh, prologue of their play being that timeline and so on. So it's not just looking at basic quotes and things and characters and events, it's actually talking about the uh, playwright's message and the playwright's construction of the play and the way in which they've put it together in order to get those ideas across. So the paragraph continues here. Whilst the longest memory also does not follow a linear narrative structure, so beginning with that thing that it has in common and talking about whilst, yes, it also does this. That's why whilst is one of my most favourite words when it comes to these paragraphs because it subtly makes the point that, okay, they're both doing the similar thing here, but then we're going to resolve the sentence and talk about where they differ later on. So it's a great word for you to be using if you're not doing it already. The longest memory also does not follow a linear narrative structure. It differs in that few of the slaves take any form of their identity or culture from the past. All stories of characters from when they were younger are more cautionary as readers learn of the cycle of abuse and mistreatment and how this is solidified through time. And so that might be an idea that you want to add to your repertoire and to your understanding of how these two texts work. The idea of memory is prevalent in both of the texts, however, it exists in very different ways. The Indigenous uh, perspective in the seven stages of grieving is to have great pride in the past and in memories and in history. Whilst it also does bring pain, of course, there is that element to it as well, it does differ from uh, the longest memory where the characters in the longest memory don't seem to have any of that pride or anything. Rather, it talks about the cycle of abuse that happened on these plantations. Whitechapel laments that the future is just more of the past waiting to happen. And it is this attitude that sees him one day wake and decide that from this day I had no name. Thus, the past provides no escape for the slaves and is merely reinforcement of the horrors of their plight. Whilst the seven stages of grieving presents horrific moments from the past, it does also portray history as a story from which younger generations can learn and something that should be remembered. The testimony to good times displayed in Nana's house is footed by a suitcase made up of photographs from the past. Nana's transporting from living memory to the suitcase highlights the importance of not forgetting the past to the family depicted in the play. Enoch and Mailman present the past as stories of who we are, and there is a sense of loss conveyed as Nana took so many stories with her. Our tradition, our heritage, gone. However, there is also a sense of hope throughout the play as the woman tells stories as it was told to her. 
and she remarks that the story hasn't finished yet, allowing the audience to feel that despite the pain of the past, her culture can continue through storytelling and learning from the past. This can be seen in stark contrast to Whitechapel, who wonders, what was I before this? As a bridge to history for his great-grandchildren, Whitechapel refuses to talk about Africa, seeing it as his past and not theirs. Diagua presents history as a place of pain as Whitechapel cries that memory hurts and pleads, don't make me remember. And so what I'd like you to do now is to take a look at those last five or six sentences and notice that it has really engaged in the message, the values, the big ideas, the uh, ideas and themes coming forward from, from both the Agua and Enoch and Mailman, and that it's actually used their names in talking about how they've constructed the text, the things that they've done, the ways that they've talked about memories and the past and all these types of things in a way to really get to what it is in terms of what they're saying. And so if you can get your analysis to that point, you'll be able to make sure that you're really engaging in a sophisticated comparison of these two texts, where you're not just talking about events and characters and things that could be compared, but you're really talking about how the texts have been put together so that you have a sense of um, what the both of them are saying, and therefore you can really deal in what they're um, similar in and where they differ as well. In a devastating manner, this view of the past finds him disconnected from his family and the pain he has experienced is too much for him to bear. Both texts examine the role of memory in shaping who a group of people are and how they see themselves. However, they diverge in the manner in which memory can be used to perpetuate a culture and to find a sense of optimism for the future. Whilst Iaguar's characters see very, very little hope in the future or connection to the past, Mailman and Enoch's characters are able to see the importance of storytelling and ensuring that tradition and culture is kept alive. And so that's the paragraph for today. I hope you've got a lot out of it. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, taking a look at a different way of uh, going about uh, putting these paragraphs together. And I hope that there's much that you can take out from the video that you can import into your essay writing. If you've got something out of the video, subscribe to our channel, take a look around the channel and see uh, the other elements that we've uh, covered in the VCE study design. And put a comment down there if you'd like to ask any questions about anything that we've covered that we might be able to help you out with. But until we see you next time, all the best with your studying and good luck.